A spectre is haunting China, the spectre of a real estate meltdown. Thousands of disgruntled Chinese apartment buyers have gathered to the streets chanting, construction stops, mortgage stops, deliver homes and get repaid. Yes, the buyers have stopped paying their mortgages, a radical step in a country where dissent is not tolerated. This public backlash has rattled authorities, putting the second largest economy in a disarray, and the real estate bubble is finally bursting with no end in sight. You might be wondering how this happened, how a real estate boom turned into China's biggest nightmare in recent decades. Is this the beginning of China's Lehman moment, of a start of a global financial contagion? Can this affect a common man who is already bearing the brunt of current volatile financial markets? So grab a seat and stick to the end of the video if you want to know exactly how much money Chinese companies need to complete halted projects. First, we need to know how this complex sector works. For decades, the property sector has anchored China's economy, generating more than a staggering $50 trillion. Triggering factor, any guesses? This has been possible owing to an unprecedented urbanization. More than 50% of the population now lives in urban cities in a quest for better living standards. And did you know that China has a highly competitive marriage market for men, so you become more eligible if you own a property? Interesting, isn't it? These factors have ballooned the demand for houses, thus giving birth to an intriguing system, the pre-sale homes. Since the 1990s, developers in China sell a pre-sale round where buyers put down a deposit and start paying back the mortgage for unfinished projects. Insane and odd to say the least. But this has been a common phenomenon in China for years. In fact, pre-sales make up 85% of new home sales in China. Let me simplify it further. The developers in Beijing are smart and often greedy. In the lure of profits, revenue collected from pre-sales are not utilized to fund current project developments. Through accessible debt and copious amounts of available money, developers fund previous year's projects, and the cycle of funding last year's developments instead of present housing projects continues. Things work well until the demand shrinks, and this is exactly what is currently happening. In other words, the pre-sale system has seeds of its own destruction. By the way, are you enjoying this video? Please give it a like and hit the subscribe button if you like content about business, economy and crypto. It really helps me grow the channel. Now that we have talked about how the housing sector works in China, let's dive into the elephant in the room. How did we get here? Ah, we know you might be thinking that if the pre-sale system is intact since the 1990s and proceeds from debt and pre-sold houses have fueled economic boom in China, then where did things go wrong? Are the financial gods not showering their blessings on Beijing's investors? The reality is that two massive factors have turned the tables. First is China's Communist Party's quest to clamp down on skyrocketing property prices. In fact, President Xi has mentioned numerous times that houses are for living in, not for speculation. Resultantly, in 2020, he introduced a policy called Three Red Lines to force the developers to deleverage. Red line number one, Developers' liabilities do not exceed 70% of their assets. Red line number two, net debt must be less than 100% of equity. Red line three, cash reserves must be at least 100% of short-term debt. Well, these were shrewd moves by Smarty Xi, but things did not come out as well as he had anticipated. Half of China's developers crossed these red lines, paving the way for a real estate demise. The first biggest casualty was the Evergrande Group, which racked up $305 billion of liabilities to become the world's first indebted property developer. And last December, this financial juggernaut collapsed and defaulted. Since then, developers have been unable to continue construction, struggling to find funds. Secondly, the situation was exacerbated by COVID-19. The zero COVID policy by Beijing put cities to standstill. Partial lockdowns wreaked havoc for the construction sector, subsequently halting China's economic locomotive. Imagine you were compelled to pay the mortgage on a flat you bought three months ago. The work has now been halted because your developer cannot pay for labor and supplies. What would be your response? Definitely, you would want to take them to the cleaners. At best, you would have stopped the payments. This is exactly the dilemma the Chinese buyers are enduring. The situation is boiling. It all began with a 590-word letter penned by angry purchasers of the half-built Dynasty Mansion project. 
The letter quoted, all home buyers with outstanding mortgage loans will stop paying unless construction resumes before October 20. The ultimatum sparked an outcry on social media platforms and quickly became a manifesto that was followed by protesters from Shanghai to Beijing and Shenzhen to Zhengzhou. Within four weeks, more than 320 projects in about 100 cities were facing similar protests. In an interview to BBC, a young couple from Zhengzhou said, we have imagined countless times the joy of living in a new home, but now it all feels ridiculous. Well, you might be thinking that it is no big deal to boycott these payments. But for a country like China, where real estate accounts for 70% of personal wealth, boycotting $300 billion worth of loans matters. Why? Because it could have a domino effect on the other sectors as well, especially the banks, leading to a total economic paralysis. Seriously, we don't want another financial crisis. Chinese version of Lehman Brothers knocking at our doors? Or are we actually moving towards an economic crunch? Let's find out. Many financial experts are drawing parallels between the 2007 to 2009 American crisis with the current fiasco in China. Some believe that this housing crisis will bring China to its knees. Professor Robert Z. Alaba, a professor at University of Chicago, sees the unraveling of China's property bubble as marking the end of the country's economic miracle of the past four decades. The Xi government may provide a burst of liquidity to paper over the insolvency of property developers, but it cannot paper over the demographics of a declining population and 40 or 60 million vacant and overpriced apartments. Kei Jin, professor at the London School of Economics, thinks otherwise, as major banks in China are state-owned and foreigners have little exposure to Chinese assets. Kayu believes that global ripple effects will be limited. But another concern is that the crisis will engulf China's banking sector. Already, five Chinese banks froze customer deposits, causing 400,000 citizens to be unable to access their savings. Well, we think that the crumbling housing sector can cripple Beijing's banking sector, and this might trigger a global economic catastrophe. It can come back and haunt every one of us. Dark times await. However, any major breakthrough can be achieved if CCP takes timely measures. China's central bank has already mobilized a $148 billion bailout for real estate projects, but experts think that companies need $444 billion just to complete halted projects. Even if construction restarts, many developers may not survive because house sales are unlikely to ramp up. According to China Real Estate Information Corp, sales in China's 100 top developers dropped by 39.7% in July, compared to the same period last year. The bottom line is that CCP needs to find new avenues of growth. Otherwise, a disaster at an unimaginable scale might ensue, which could impact every citizen on the globe. In a nutshell, China's housing crisis is worse than we think. Buyers are dissatisfied and ready to go at greater lengths to get what they were promised. Moving towards the other side of the coin, the developers are encountering a massive deadlock. President Xi needs to spearhead a massive bailout plan based on growth. What do you think about this worsening housing crisis? Who's responsible for this mess? And are we on the brink of financial paralysis? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to watch our previous video about China's collapse and don't forget to click that subscribe button. I make videos like this every week where I uncover the secrets of money and business.